my last video was about the divine hiddenness problem, which a lot of people think is the best argument against God's existence. Of course, from the biblical perspective, there's no such thing as a good argument against God's existence in the same way that there is no good argument against the fact that two plus two is four. It's just self-evident. It just is what it is. The only reason why you would deny the fact that two plus two is four and the fact that God created the world is because you have an ulterior motive. It's not because you're stupid or you are ignorant or something. It's because you are evil. And that's not my teachings. That's what Jesus told us in John chapter 3. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. So why don't people come to the light? Why do people refuse to come to Christ in faith? Is it because there's not enough evidence or they're dumb? No, of course not. It's because they love the darkness rather than the light. The reason why they don't like the light is because they are children of darkness, therefore they love darkness. That's why you must be born again into a child of light so that you can come to the light so that your deeds may be manifested as having been performed in God. Once again, John chapter 7, the world cannot hate you, he's talking to his unbelieving brothers at the time, but it hates me because I bear witness about it that its deeds are evil. The reason why people reject Jesus is not because there's not enough evidence of his resurrection or anything. It's because they don't want to. It's a heart problem. The moment you make it an evidence problem, you're calling God a liar. Because the Bible specifically states that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. So when an atheist says, I haven't seen any evidence for God's existence, we as Christians cannot believe the atheists when they're saying stuff like that. Because since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, both his eternal power and divine nature have clearly been seen being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. So to put it simply, uh, people refuse to believe in Jesus because they are evil. Let me say that again, because people completely misunderstood it when I said that in the previous video. Someone commented, oh, so just because I don't believe in God, it makes me evil. No, that's not what I said. It's because you're evil. That's why you don't believe in God. What you need is to be born again so that you have a new heart that desires God, so that you love God, so that you believe in God, so that you have ears to hear the voice of the good shepherd. And of course, I received more nonsense comments like this and this. You can pause the video and read these if you want. But this is the main comment that I want to respond to. I get stuff like this from Christians all the time. I don't know if this person is a Christian, but here's what it says. So your response to someone who comes to you saying they are sincerely seeking God, but have doubt is you're lying about being sincere. You don't really want to seek him. You're actually just evil and ignore people who try to clarify scripture. What a great way to alienate a potential convert. First of all, that was not the topic of the video. Someone who says that they seek God sincerely and have doubt is not at all the same thing as someone who says that they sincerely sought God and don't believe in him. That's a completely different person. So already he misunderstood what I said in the video. Number two, I did not claim that he was lying because I don't know the motivations of the hearts of men. It is highly likely that he's lying and being deceptive because that's what liars do. But in this certain situation, I obviously can't prove that he's purposely misleading you. What I do know is simply what Romans chapter one says. That which is known about God is evident within him. Every atheist for God made it evident to him. This is true for every unbeliever as well. Same with Muslims too, because this is talking about the God, not a fake God that they came up with on their own. For even though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish heart was darkened. For even though the atheist knows God, knows of his existence, and he has clearly seen his invisible attributes being understood through what has been made. The atheist, every single one of them, they suppress that truth and unrighteousness. What I was doing in that video is just pointing that out. You're actually just evil and ignore people who try to clarify scripture. Once again, that's not what I said. You're just evil. That's not a good way to put it. It's actually, you are so evil. You're so depraved. You are in the darkness. You need Jesus Christ. You need to be saved. The fact that atheists are evil is the core reason why they don't believe in God. It's not, oh, they're just evil. They're just, obviously they're not going to believe in God. 
No, it's way bigger than that. That's the sin problem. Their hearts, their minds are darkened and they love sin so much that they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Romans chapter eight says this, for those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the spirit, right? If you've been born of the spirit, the things of the spirit, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. Atheists are not in the spirit. They are in the flesh. Their minds are not set on the things of the spirit they're hostile toward god for it what is it referring to it's referring to the mind for the mind of the unbelieving person the one in the flesh does not subject itself to the law of god for it is not even able to do so and those who are in the flesh are not able to please god so this last part about what a great way to alienate a potential convert is just absolute nonsense look at what happened in acts chapter 2 this is peter speaking men of israel listen to these words jesus the nazarene a man attested to you by god with miracles and wonders and signs which god did through him in your midst just as you yourselves know this man delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of god you nailed to a cross by the hands of lawless men and put him to death it's not wrong to speak the full gospel truth to non-believers in fact you have to imagine if peter came out and said you know what you guys we tried to give you the most evidence that we could we tried to convince you of god's existence and the fact that jesus is the son of god but you know you just couldn't understand somehow for some reason i wonder how and you just ended up making a mistake you know and, you know he calls them lawless men because that's what they are evil people sinful people therefore let all of the house of israel know for certain that god has made him both lord and Christ, this is Jesus, whom you crucify. I read this to point out the fact that it is so biblical, in fact, extremely biblical, to point out the unbeliever's sin, not as a hypocrite, not to just put them down or anything, but the fact is, if you don't point out their sin, then how in the world are they going to know that they need to be forgiven? They won't. So that's why I love to emphasize the fact that unbelievers hate God. They sin against him every single day willfully. And unbelief is a sin. It's not just a place of neutrality like people are trying to find God and trying to find out that he exists. No, there's no such thing as someone who is from a good heart seeking God and not finding him. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter, what should we do? And of course, you guys know the story. Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus. And 3,000 souls got saved. Awesome. So of course, that happens when God decides to convict the crowd hearing those truths of their sin and saves 3,000 people. That's awesome. But God is not obligated to do that every time you speak these harsh truths to people. John chapter 6, very famous passage. Jesus feeds 5,000, then he walks on the sea, and then he goes into this long dialogue about how he is the bread of life who has come down from heaven and he says all that the father gives to me will come to me and the one who comes to me i will never cast out for i have come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me now this is the will of him who sent me that all he has given me i lose nothing but raise it up on the last day remember the father chose from eternity past a specific people in christ jesus so that they would be found holy and blameless before him in love and jesus was given the mission to purchase these people with his blood on the cross because these are sinful people who need their sins to be forgiven so that they could be raised up on the last day to receive eternal life and jesus is a perfect savior every single person that god gave to his son is going to come to him in faith because of course the holy spirit convicted them of their sin and regenerated their hearts so that they could believe and follow jesus but this is the will of my father that everyone who sees the son and believes in him will have eternal life and i myself will raise him up on the last day and the jews were of course grumbling and he also says he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and i will raise him up on the last day therefore many of his disciples when they heard this said this is a difficult statement who can listen to it jesus said does this cause you to stumble what then if you see the son of man ascending to where he was before the spirit is the one who gives life the flesh profits nothing the word that i have spoken to you are spirit and are life i speak these truths from the bible because they give life but there's some of you who do not believe for jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was that would betray him that's why he was saying for this reason i have said to you no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him from the father as a result of this many of his disciples went away and were not walking with him anymore imagine just imagine jesus listening to this comment and then saying oh you're right i, I shouldn't call these people evil I, I shouldn't tell them their need for a savior because i gotta try my best to convert these people because there's this idea of a potential convert there there's no such thing as a potential convert just so you guys know second timothy chapter 2 says 
says this, For this reason I endure all things for the sake of the potential converts out there, so that they may also obtain salvation. Nope. We as Christians, we endure all things for the sake of the elect, God's chosen people, his sheep, his lost sheep that are out there that need to be found. We endure all things for their sake, so that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. We have salvation, and our goal is not to save the potential converts out there. This is why when people get so angry at our teaching, we're not really supposed to get all angry about it. Obviously, it's a sad thing to watch people's darkened hearts refusing to obey the gospel. But at the same time, we don't need to worry about trying to convert people. It's God who converts people, specifically his people that he chose to save. Now, he who believes in me as the scripture said from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water i'm a christian you're a christian watching this video this he spoke of the spirit whom those who believed in him were going to receive for the spirit was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified the fact is the holy spirit dwells in you and rivers of living water are flowing out of your heart the result of the truths that you speak to anybody is the salvation of other people that is the means by which god has decided to save his elect and also the entire world we as christians do not need to worry about alienating a potential convert we don't need to walk on eggshells when we're talking to evil non-believers who hate god we just need to tell them the truth with gentleness and kindness i know it's hard <laughs> to look someone in the face and call them out on their sin not to ignore the obvious fact that we are also sinners and don't deserve salvation to begin with that'll be it for today though remember to like and subscribe so that this can be pushed out to more people so that more people can learn about god's word love you guys so much